Hey everyone, um, this video is about dealing with networking issues. I know, very, very exciting topic. Uh, I made the video as a result of the issues I experienced with my ISP, internet service provider, Cox Communications, over the past 18 months or so, between early 2018 and mid-2019. I'll be telling my story along with the methods used to identify and fix the issues I experienced in hopes that someone else will find the video helpful. I hope you enjoy. I'm a pretty avid gamer. I play a number of competitive games online. Rocket League, a lot. Halo, Destiny 2, um, all games that are highly dependent on a quality connection between my system and the server I'm playing on. I'm also an IT professional. I have several certs and a number of years in a position supporting hardware and software in a corporate environment along with networking. I wanted to make a video on the issues I've experienced with in Phoenix, Arizona on finding the source of your internet problems and how to deal with them if your ISP is to blame. So I'm gonna walk you through what I experienced and couple in with that some troubleshooting tips that you can use at home to figure out where the problem lies. This video isn't meant as a technical dive. It's meant to help the normal user understand how to properly identify issues with their internet service provider as opposed to their internal networks in their home. And as such, I'm going to be talking about the technical aspects of networking, et cetera, in a very general manner. In early 2018, I started to notice a huge number of issues while playing Rocket League Online. My in-game latency would jump to several hundred milliseconds frequently, and I started to notice my latency numbers would turn red and start blinking. After a bit of investigating on the Rocket League forums, it uh, turned out this was indicative of packet loss. Um, packets are small sets of data that anything connected to the internet sends and receives when communicating with anything else on the internet. Packet loss is when a packet fails to reach its intended destination. Um, this can occur as a result of numerous networking issues, sometimes due to issues inside your network, other times due to issues outside your network. Multiplayer games are especially sensitive to packet loss, as any loss in packets can lead to numerous issues that will impact your ability to play online. When experiencing issues with latency or packet loss, you always want to rule out your internal network first. Um, in other words, all the devices in your home, between your computer, your phone, your console, and the internet. Um, these usually consist of your router, your modem, switches if you have them, any cabling, Ethernet cabling you have, and anything else between your computer devices and the cable that plugs into your router or modem. For most people, the two devices you want to think about are your router and your modem. Those are the most commonly used, I guess, home networking devices that could be problematic. So let's go back to my house. Um, I was having these issues with packet loss and latency, and I needed to figure out what, what the cause of this was. Is it inside my network? Is it outside? All my gaming devices are hardwired, so that completely removes Wi-Fi as the culprit. Um, if you're gaming or connecting to a wireless network, they're all subject to interference, and they're innately less reliable than a wired, wired connection is. Um, and they're generally much worse for gaming when it comes to latency uh, and reliability when compared to a wired connection. So I began with the assumption that either A, my router was failing, as they tend to do every couple years, or B, my modem was failing, as they also tend to do every couple years. This is not uncommon. Prior to contacting my ISP about the networking issues I was seeing, I wanted to be sure this wasn't an issue inside my network. <clears throat> the easiest way to rule out your internal network is to hardwire a computer directly to your modem, with no router, etc., anything else in between and see if the same network issues persist with no other networking hardware or devices in the mix. If you see the same network issues wired directly to your modem, then that probably means that either A, your modem's the issue and needs to be replaced, or B, your network's fine and the issue's outside of your home. To make sure my internal network wasn't the issue, I purchased a new modem and a new router. Um, they were both a couple years old and I just wanted to rule out any type of issues between the two. Um, long story short, I still had the same latency and packet loss issues um, in all the games I was playing online. And at this point, I began paying better attention to streaming video quality and general internet use. Um, so my streaming video at home, even on hardwired devices, would occasionally have to buffer. I'd see a drop in resolution, making it look pixelated or grainy, uh, and would just generally not work as it should. 
At this point, I had a 100 megabit per second down, 10 megabit per second up cable connection through Cox Communications, which should be plenty of bandwidth to stream a 1080p video. So what the hell was going on, right? After swapping all my home hardware and having the same issues, I decided to call my ISP, Cox Communications, to see if they could provide any help in isolating this issue. This was in roughly July 2018. Um, I don't have any hard dates. I could go back and look, but just for the general purposes of this video, it's, it's generally July 2018. Uh, they suggested sending out an in-home tech to verify any issues inside and outside my home network, um, i.e. the cable cabling running to my home from the nearby neighborhood node. I agreed, said come on out, and they unsurprisingly found no issues with their network. Um, your ISP owns the bulk of the networking hardware that connects you and your house to the rest of the world, and their accountability, they're accountable for its functionality. There are segments of these networks that belong to third parties, such as level three communications, for example, but your ISP, whether it be Cox or Comcast or Time Warner or whatever, is ultimately responsible for addressing any issues with third party infrastructure on your behalf that impacts your ability to access the internet. I went so far as to replace even all the ethernet cabling and RG6 coax cabling running throughout my house. Um, homes in many parts of the country have coax or RG6 cabling running throughout the house to allow for um, easy access to TVs if you want to plug them in your bedroom or whatever. There's already coax cabling running throughout your home in many cases. Um, as it turns out, in Phoenix, our house is one story. There wasn't a lot of existing cabling running through the house. Um, so my RG6 line that runs from my modem goes straight to the wall. And from the wall, it goes straight to the nearest neighborhood node. There's nothing else in between. Keep in mind, your internet provider is not technically responsible usually for cabling problems inside your home. But at least in the case with Cox, they do offer warranties that cover issues with your internal coax cabling, should the, should the problem found ex uh, to exist inside your home. So coming back, at this point, I was fairly certain that the problem was external to my home and subsequently the responsibility of my internet service provider, Cox Communications. Unfortunately, every time I called while I was experiencing issues, I got the same runaround for their tech support. Everything's fine, your signal's looking good, there's no issues being reported by other people in your neighborhood and we need to get a tech into your home, so on and so forth. On-site techs came by typically during the week middle of the day um, during work hours while most people are not at home and thus not using the internet and thus <laughs> um, this testing this this network validation was done during off-peak times of utilization meaning when their network has the lowest amount of load on it compared to nights and weekends my issues almost entirely occurred during peak times of utilization during nights and weekends so it was about this time I had a realization that my complaints about my internet functionality were pretty subjective uh, from the perspective of an ISP and probably wouldn't hold a whole lot of weight. I'm sure ISPs here, my internet isn't working all the time, mostly from people with issues inside their own networks. So I figured out what I needed was a set of objective data that demonstrated the issues I was seeing. I could back up what I was saying with some sort of data, evidence, right? So I found this program called PingPlotter. Uh, it's a great utility. I still use it 24-7, 365 to monitor my network conditions. The program can be used to send a couple different types of diagnostic communication to servers, and it does a really excellent job of graphing latency and packet loss specifically. It's really easy to use, really easy to interpret. So this was the method that I started using to obtain data to back up my complaints with Cox easily readable graphed data with timestamps, destination server names, IP addresses, latency, packet loss. All of this information was very granular, granular, even to the point of tracking latency and packet loss on every individual node or hop between my network and the destination server. So when you say my internet isn't working and you call your ISP, it's probably gonna get ignored or they're gonna send someone out to your home. When you say something like, my internet wasn't working during these dates and times, and I have data to prove it, that's gonna probably make them second guess at least that they need to look into it a little further, um, as opposed to just scheduling a technician and getting them out to your home and getting you off the phone. So 
uh, I obviously began by trying to vet my internal network. Uh, I did this by running ping plotter while wired directly to my modem with several different systems um, to validate my internal network. With a brand new modem, brand new router, multiple systems um, doing this test direct to my modem, I was still seeing the same high levels of packet loss and latency during nights and weekends, i.e. when most people are online and when Cox's network is under, under the large am largest amount of stress. My packet loss percentages were roughly between 5% and wait for it, 35%. I'm gonna say that again. What I was seeing routinely on nights and weekends was between 5% packet loss and 35% packet loss. So more than a third of my packets were being lost on occasion. If you look at the FCC data for Cox as an ISP, 0.1% packet loss is what's considered normal or average for Cox. So my numbers were obviously substantially higher than that and should have been considered problematic when calling with this data. I even went through the process of buying another modem, a DOCSIS 3.1 this time, as a last ditch effort to rule out any type of issues related to the DOCSIS 3.0 to 3.1 transition that was occurring within Cox's network. I found it highly unlikely that that could have been the issue, but at this point, I was, I was ready to essentially do anything to correct this issue and have reliable, consistent internet connectivity. So the new DOCSIS 3.1 modem luckily um, has a connections tab, it's a Motorola, that tracks all 32 DOCSIS 3.1 channels uh, and logs corrected and uncorrected packets along with a bunch of other useful data. Um, <coughs> So when I began saving this ping plotter data, um, I also began grabbing screenshots from my modem's connections page and corroborated the date, time, and amount of packet loss that was shown between ping plotter and the, the modem connections page. So I essentially had two different sets of data to showing the exact same issue at the same time. Um, I had weeks of data at this point, all showing the same problematic network symptoms high latency and packet loss during peak times of utilization. The data exactly mirrored my network conditions. When latency and packet loss spiked, streaming video, gaming, um, web browsing, all was unusable. After quite a bit of constant communication with my ISP, Cox, um, they were still without meaningful action. Every time I called, they suggested the same thing, to have someone come out to my home, check the cabling running to my modem, check my internal networking hardware, etc. It was just a big cycle, um, getting me nowhere. So at this point, I had the data to demonstrate an issue that required corrective action by my internet provider, but my internet provider was still unresponsive. What other options do you have or did I have as a consumer? The most obvious option is to switch internet providers. Unfortunately, in my area of Phoenix, Arizona, a metro area of over four and a half million people, Cox is my only real option. CenturyLink offers DSL internet, um, but a door-to-door -door salesman explained the download speeds are currently between 7 and 14 megabits per second down, with no real upload speeds to speak of. Neighbors with CenturyLink laughed when I asked about their quality of service, saying it's nearly unusable under real-world conditions. Um, so, I have no real competitor to move to, and my ISP is unresponsive. What then? W what do you do? So I decided to turn to the FCC. The FCC has an uh, ISP complaint form, but the complaint is technically informal. A formal complaint requires a $235 fee, and to quote the FCC information page, parties filing formal complaints usually are represented by lawyers or experts in communications law and the FCC's pr procedural rules. No attorney fees may be awarded. So this was a no-go for me. I went the informal complaint route. I submitted an informal complaint along with a lengthy description of the issues experienced and supporting data. It was at this point that Cox's executive support team reached out to me as a result of the FCC complaint. I worked with one person in particular on this team, but again ran into the same issues. Hearing again that Cox is unable to verify issues with my connectivity despite the large data set I had supplied both the FCC and Cox directly. Cox suggested having a person out to my home again for the 12th time since we moved into our house. And I again obliged, hoping to find some type of issue. 
As it turned out, the in-home tech was able to validate the packet loss and latency issues at the cable outside my home, excluding my entire internal network. So I thought, awesome. A fix has got to be coming at this point, right? So Cox replaced the RG11 cable that runs to my home from the ne nearest neighborhood node, along with the RG6 line running from that RG11 line to my modem. Unfortunately, the packet loss and latency issues persisted. At this point, all internal networking hardware, as well as the entire coax run from my modem to our neighborhood node had been replaced, leaving only hardware at or beyond the, the, near, the neighborhood node as the potential culprit. Cox was, at this point, very lethargic in responding after the 13th in-home visit in September 2018. At this point, <coughs> um, I had sent dozens of emails, called in several dozen times to report outages, sent in numerous data sets showing issues over the course of 2018, and still, despite all that, my internet was still unusable regularly on nights and weekends. Network issues had been ongoing from early 2018 through late 2018 at this point, with no resolution in sight. So, seems kind of hopeless. Um, I was fairly frustrated at this point, but I wasn't willing to give up. So I continued voicing my frustrations uh, through several online mediators. Um, I reached out to the Cox Internet Support Forums, the Better Business Bureau, the City of Phoenix Cable Complaints Department, as well as the Arizona State Attorney General's Office. And this all occurred between about October 2018 through February 2019. In each circumstance, I supplied supporting documentation and a lengthy explanation of issues. I continued filing FCC complaints, despite the FCC being mainly a mediator and not forcing any type of actual action by Cox due to the informal nature of their complaint process. The FCC eventually resolved to simply close out any subsequent informal complaints I filed, telling me the next step was to file a formal complaint, offering no real or tangible assistance at all. I finally received word in March 2019, I believe it was March 2019, from Cox that the neighborhood node I'm tied into was, quote, oversaturated and was being split in Q2 2019. This oversaturation and consequential node split wasn't communicated to me until after my complaint through the Arizona Attorney General's office, roughly six months after official complaints began, and nearly a year after the network issues became too much to ignore. It could be that they've been working on this the whole time behind the scenes um, since early 2018 or late 2018, uh, and maybe they just failed to communicate that to me. Um, I don't know. I can't say that for sure. The node split occurred at the end of June 2019. Um, I'm currently about two weeks into the node split. Immediately after the node split, my latency spikes and packet loss issues disappeared. The entire 12 to 18 month time span of network problems impacting everything from gaming to streaming video to simple web browsing to VPNing, VPNing in for work was resolved due to an oversaturated node, an issue entirely beyond my home and beyond my ability to personally do anything about it. Very frustrating, but glad that it's finally potentially fixed. Unfortunately, in my opinion, the situation has been a tremendous failure of my ISP by way of little and very slow action on behalf of their customer, a failure of the ISP market in a major U.S. city, as well as a failure of the regulatory responsibilities of the FCC. Without the data from Ping Plotter and my modem, as well as persistence through the various methods of complaints that I filed, I highly doubt this node split would have taken place or I doubt that would have taken place in the same time span in which it did. If you're experiencing networking issues, I highly suggesting, suggest following these procedures. Just do a couple simple things to start with. Number one, start monitoring your network. Um, check out Ping Plotter. It's a great utility. Um, it does what it does very well. Start checking your network conditions. See if you can replicate packet loss, latency issues date, at certain dates and times. If you are graphing packet loss and latency issues, um, make sure it's not your internal network. Hook up a computer um, directly to your modem, run the test again, and see if you get the same results. If you see the same results with nothing else in the mix other than your modem, try replacing that modem. If the same issues persist with a new modem, 
that at that point it's time to reach out to your ISP. So at this point, you'll probably have uh, a decent amount of data, which would be step two. When you reach out to your ISP, be sure that you're supplying data to support what you're saying. That will at least give them something to look at and reference when they're checking things from their end. If it turns out like my situation where your ISP is unresponsive, um, at that point you have an option. You can file complaints with public and private entities who can mediate a fix on your behalf, or at least attempt to get the ball rolling on a fix. I'm going to leave links to the FCC, the Better Business Bureau, et cetera, et cetera, in the comments, um, as well as Ping Plotter. Um, so if you want to use some of those references, please do so. And I hope this story and guide helps you in some way. Um, my goal was to help the average user understand what's going on when network issues occur and how to make sure it's not internal to your network and then how to deal with your ISP if it is external to your network. So if you're having these issues, good luck and thanks for checking this video out.